Hey, hey, welcome back to the official podcast party people. Today we're joined by Baby No Money. It's our first guest in a while and we got a banger here. Hello, guys. How we all doing? Pretty good. Doing great. Good. Very ASMR-esque. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Hello, guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> dude, yeah, I'm happy to be on. This is fucking sick. Thank you. Th- thank you for having me. I, uh, I'm looking outside of my beautiful view in, uh, in LA of, of a tree. And uh, it's sunny. How's it? Uh, how's it out there where you guys are? Well, down here in Florida, it's filled with pollen, and for the first time in my life, it's actually giving me allergies. So I've been stuffy and sniffly, and my throat's been full of phlegm. It fucking sucks. Actually, I'm pretty upset. But thank you for asking. You've never had allergies before? Never. Not until this year. The amount of po- so apparently. Hmm. I could just be getting lied to by Matt, but according to Matt, he said that right now Tampa has the most pollen in the United States, and I believe it. <laughs> really? Fuck. What the fuck? Why? I don't know. I'm not God. I didn't make it, but like, <laughs> there's so much pollen that when you go outside, it is just literally raining it at all hours of the day. Yep. Huh. It, it's kind of a fucking war zone here, Jackson. If you look outside everywhere, it's just everywhere. The huh. Revenge of the bees? Crazy. What do you mean a bee thing? Yeah, wait, wait. Do bees like b- bees move pollen? They don't create it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The plants create <laughs> pollen, Jackson. It's like transportation. But what, dude? What you should get is a, there's a there's a spray. It's like a nose spray. It's called propolis. It's like bee. Prop- it's like it's like really raw bee pollen. I don't know. I was having allergies like crazy two years ago when I was on tour and. I started spraying this shit up my nose, and it like it kind of burns. It like hurts, but it but eventually how is, how just is like solution spraying pollen directly into your nose. <laughs> Wouldn't that kill because it? it's it's kind of it's kind of like a like a, I don't know the term right now. It's a little early for me, but it's like the term of when you introduce yourself to something. It's like conditioning of the, oh exposure therapy, uh, e- exposure, exposure therapy, therapy. Yeah, yeah, like a vaccine. Essentially, yeah. I honestly, it, it like changed my life on the road. I, I used to have like super bad post nasal drip and that would give me like acid reflux and then yada, yada, yada. But it just kind of went away immediately. I'll, I'll send you a yeah. link on, uh, on Amazon. Yeah, toss me the link to it. I just looked it up. It's a resin like material made by bees from the buds of popular and cone bearing trees. So you're literally just blasting yourself with like the bees' hard work. <laughs> That's kind of cute. Yeah. <laughs> it's dope. Can't you just shove some honey up there then? The bee nut. What was shoving honey up your nose, dude? Yeah, how the fuck would that? I mean, I guess it would like block the pollen from infiltrating if you wanted to create like a protective layer, but it would also smell really good. It would smell good, yeah. Yeah, I don't really understand this the science behind it, in all honesty, but I it helped like crazy. So I would I'd recommend it. I don't know. Leave the science to the bees. The bees know what they're doing. It's brutal. I, I don't know if any of you, yeah. uh, any anyone besides me and baby here get it, but it has been bad. I wake up every morning and it's like I'm fucking clawing my way through like this, this like mucus, this thick yeah. mucus. It's so frustrating. Actually, I think I did have that. It's weird that you can just develop this over time, just randomly. I wonder what causes that. Like I've gone my whole life without allergies as well. And if I woke up tomorrow just with like a shellfish allergy or some, something dumb like that, I'd be I'd be kind of mad. I'd be like, why did this happen? Yeah, I, I am mad about this pollen shit, man. It's got me tight. Yeah, that's the yeah, worst. Yeah, you don't sound like you're doing too good. That was my entire life for God knows how long until I started doing allergy shots for the last two years. Now is oh finally when I feel like a normal human being. God, you used to be such a weak man. Jesus. I did. I was frail. A strong breeze would push me over and never relent. Weren't you allergic to I'm trees? happy with the man you become. <laughs> yeah, I was allergic to everything. A- absolutely everything. I've still got the panel yeah. somewhere in my like little drawer of documents. It's like, all right, dogs, max, cats, max, trees, max, rats, max. Maybe if you want to <laughs> steal those lyrics, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, money, max. <laughs> Money max, <laughs> bitches max. Dude, how uh, how how much does an allergy shot cost? Uh, they're actually pretty cheap. It's uh, five dollars a session. So no, that's not bad. from they're what they said, you go, you start out like once a week, 
where you get you know you get a shot once a week and then once every two weeks then once every three et cetera et cetera until you're done so every time you go it's like five dollars so i i don't know how much it would be total for how long you have to do it but it's mm. actually pretty cheap to do i'd recommend it's a subscription it. service kind of it is it's the netflix of skincare yeah <laughs> Wow, that's crazy. Netflix is skincare. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm allergic to cats and a little bit of bees, but that's other than that. What did people do before medicine then? Did you just roll over and die Suffer. if you encountered a street cat? Die? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, probably just die, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just weird to me that this gene would be like, is our allergies hereditary? Is this something that's passed on? Because then how would it? No, apparently they just happen. Look at Charlie. It just no, fucking happens. Yeah. And then you die. It's, it's, a, it's spontaneous. If I remember correctly, it's every every seven years there's a chance for you to develop allergies. Yep. I think that's the the rate. It can it can shift both ways as well. You can suddenly yep. develop them, or they can suddenly go away for no reason. It's like the dumbest every fucking loot box ever. Fucking yeah, RNG what, yeah. <laughs> allergies. <laughs> Shit sucks. How how is it how is it based off seven years? Like what? Where's the the determining factor of why it switches at seven years? Like that sounds like it, one of those fake. Just the gene that is like resetting or something, or yeah, it's, it's so gonna be I, the, yeah. I just looked it up. It's like your immune system goes through these cycles, and it's five to seven years. So every five mm. to seven years, old allergies can improve and new allergies can develop. It all just depends on your environment and your exposure levels. <clears throat> so I guess if like all of us stopped eating peanut butter right now, there's a chance in five or seven years we're just fucking deathly allergic to it. Fuck yeah. Let's take that That's chance. So Let's commit. Interesting. Doesn't it work the other way That's too where people, up. they don't have lactose intolerance, but then suddenly they develop it even though they drink tons of milk? That's a little different. That's not an allergy per se. So for dairy like that, it's a specific enzyme that you need to keep refreshing in your body or something. So you need to be actively consuming dairy to avoid mm. lactose intolerance, that, which is why most people over the course of their life develop it because you stop drinking as much milk. You, you know, you, you grow up. <clears throat> so you stop getting that enzyme He's and dying eventually you develop the intolerance. You, you are literally <laughs> dying. It fucking sucks. I hate it. Like, I, I, I went yep. through my entire life making fun of people that were, like, afraid of pollen. Like, oh, look at this fucking weak loser. Can't stand these little pollen spores. And they'll, like, eat them and be like, yeah, take no that. big deal. Take that, you fuck. Now you know my pain for my entire childhood and beyond. It, yeah. I know your pain now. It, it is it is awful. It, it fucking it's, sucks. It's brutally uncomfortable. It's like being hungover without yeah. being hungover. Exactly. It is exactly like yeah. that. Pollen season for me as a kid was literally just flu season. I would just get so <laughs> sick from my allergies. Oh. I would basically have like a mini flu. It was terrible. It would last like a week. So when you say it's like a hangover, but you're not hungover, like what? What does that mean? Like you just like feel dead inside. I just imagine your it head like is a, just like full of gunk, and your your voice is like blown out because there's just so much post nasal drip, and then your throat hurts, your eyes are scratchy, yep. you can't really open your eye. It's like when you wake up like super hungover after a night at the I don't know castle or something like that. Mm. Um, it's just like, yeah, I don't know how to explain it. Just you have to feel it. It just feels bad. I don't. I don't want to feel it. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> it is kind of hard to describe. It it sucks though. I I have not been enjoying my time with these allergies. It's probably sucky because it's the feeling of a hangover. But do you know that you didn't even have fun last night? So there wasn't even an upside <laughs> exactly, to it. It yeah. just feels unfair. <laughs> yeah. Are you getting the uh, the powerful sneezes where you're just like constantly like six, seven, eight times in a row just sneezing super hard and you no. can't stop it? Oh, those are so bad. The, I haven't had those. I, I do know about those. I, all of my sneezes have been combining into like spirit bomb sneezes. So when I sneeze, <laughs> it's a violent. <laughs> like it oh, is man. so it is such a like a thunderous sneeze. Do you have like that old man sneeze now where it's like, where it just keeps going and going and going? <laughs> yeah, my sneezes recently, it's been like, it's, you need to like brace, like, it's like a like an air raid siren. I'll go in and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's all uh, pollen sucks. Fuck pollen. Yeah. Let's get rid of all of it. It does suck. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Allergies yeah. are no good. It is, it is a turbulent are... time. Go ahead, Jackson. Sorry. I was just gonna say because baby said that he's he's got allergies as well or he did 
Um, how did you ever like perform? Wouldn't that be like kind of game over if you need to perform that night and you like woke up with really bad allergies? Well, I, yeah. So there, I I went to the Czech Republic one time, and then I was like, "Yo, I need some like nasal washing spray," and they gave me this weird spray that I think is just like it's pretty much just like really low key neti pod, but I think it's from like a a, a more mineral. It's not like like a rock mineral wash down like eroded i have no fucking idea what this shit is but i sprayed up my nose before i if i have a really stuffy nose because i'm trying to clear my pathway so i don't sound like stuffy when i'm singing and stuff um but yeah i mean really it's just like sometimes you just are sick on stage and you feel terrible and you have a sore throat and you're achy around their body and you just have to perform there's like you know, if people buy 500 to 1,000 to 2,000 tickets to come see you, it's like, you have to go on stage. Yeah, you gotta. Even if your, yeah. like, leg's broken or some shit, it doesn't even <laughs> matter, so. Um, but, yeah, it does It does make it more difficult, and you just have to, you know, you go out there, you preface, you're like, hey, guys, when I say fuck, you say the flu. Fuck the flu. And it's like, <laughs> it, just, it, makes every, it makes everyone be like, oh, he's sick. It makes sense, so. Um, but, yeah, allergies, yeah, allergies are cheeks. What's the, so uh, what's the uh, what? oh we all just went in? Let's get in line. <laughs> yeah. We have the fucking stream <laughs> queue today. We're excited. Jesus Christ! Uh, uh, let me and just go no and stay in this anything. <laughs> yeah, let me just stay in this ballpark real quick. Then, what's like the worst condition you've been in for a live performance? Like uh, either sick or an injury. That's what I was. Gonna oh ask. man, 2018 in China. I was in Shanghai. I ended up getting like type 2 bronchitis Ooh, Ooh. i couldn't breathe at all like i legitimately was like coughing every couple bars uh at the end of the set i like fainted on stage and i was rushed to the hospital oh my god uh (laughs) we're at the hospital they just gave me like a they literally just gave me like 20 pills and like take them i'm like okay so i took all these 20 pills and i was feeling good after that but it was just, it was, it was rough because I was like trying to beat it with a bunch of vitamin C packets and this and that and stuff like that. And, but in, in China, they don't really have like over the counter, like acetaminophen. It's really, it's a little bit more difficult to get. And, and like, that's like what North American culture has like deemed as like most of their medicine. So I wasn't yeah. able to like mask up some of the pain for the time. And it was just, that was the most fuck. It was like night sweats. Like I was sweating through the bed. It was, it was rough. Like a really Can't fault your time. dedication because fucking fainting on stage from bronchitis. So that's pretty respectable that you still went out there at all. Yeah, yeah. I remember my deep my DJ was like crying afterwards. He was like, "Dude, that was the most inspirational shit I've ever seen." Let's fucking go. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> you changed that man's life. I've also I've also pooped on stage because I had the flu so bad. So that was pretty embarrassing, but it was also kind less of epic, inspiring. It's like, wait, it's part of the show. Well, no, but. I was just like, hey guys, I have the flu. I don't know. And then midway set, I jumped and it was a <laughs> and I was like, I'm just gonna get off stage, guys. Like, I feel terrible. So um. And then the DJ's like, that's the most inspirational shit I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I mean, my audience is definitely the type of the crowd that would just like respect poop. Yeah, Did they yeah, poop with you in solidarity yeah, and the, then you just became a well. mess? Yeah. Oh Jesus, that sounds net. Imagine if everyone was like, "Take your fucking pants off, let's shit," and everyone just like <laughs> yeah. popped a squad and pooped on the ground. That's some that's some GG Allen type shit. Yeah, you did like yeah. GG Allen. Oh Allen. no, we don't need that to happen. You could be the next GG if someone needs oh. to take up his mantle. I think I might actually. Yeah, there's like a small part of me that actually wants to see that just from like a curiosity angle, just to see what the logistics <laughs> of that would look like. Wow. <laughs> Is there footage of you shitting yourself? I want to know if I can see the poop <laughs> like hit the pants. Why would you No, show it was so I was just like on stage, I was just wearing like, you know, normal pants, just like khakis and uh this was so I went to Shake Shack and almost in 45 minutes I was like deathly on the toilet and then the next like three to four days was like i think i fecaled like 700 times it was violent like to a point where i i couldn't even use baby wipes it was so painful 
like around the around the around the cheek region. Oh, God. Um, it was like food poisoning. But it was like one of those. Whereas it was just like straight water that kind of came out of me because uh. my the insides were just not enjoying what I ate. Um, but did you prepare by wearing like triple underwear or anything like that? Like, make, like, I should have been wearing a diaper. I take my pants off. Yeah, luckily he had his depends on for that show. It was good time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, there's no video, unfortunately. But I, I really wish I, I Damn. did get a video because that was that would have been epic. Wow. So, so wait, what happens in that situation? You shit your pants, and then what? Do you did you have to do the entire set? Uh, like with your pants filled or did you like walk off stage and do a costume change like what happened so i only had like a 30 minute set and it was like it was like 24 minutes in and then i was like honestly guys i just shit my pants I <laughs> just, i'm just I'm just, <laughs> I'm just gonna get off stage and uh they're like look man all good don't worry about it uh, and i was like okay whatever and i still got paid so we're fine all at once a yeah, collective all, once all from the audience they're like they're just like, aww. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was, it was, it wasn't, I mean, something like that happens. I don't think anyone can really judge you. It's like something ridiculous just happened for you. Yeah. So it's, you know. Yeah, no, it's like, like, it's like an act of God who, who can stop themselves yeah. from shitting if they, if their butthole wants to shit, you know, <laughs> if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. It's a shame that it yeah, happened definitely. in the most vulnerable position for you ever, but you know, whatever. Made for a good podcast story. Definitely made for a really good podcast story. That's what he thought at the time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Silver lining. Sometimes you have to poop, man. <laughs> When's the last time you guys sharted? I was just trying to think of just that. Yeah. Um. Every so often, if I'm just hanging around, you know, just be doing whatever, and I think I did, it's like, oh, I gotta check things out and I get super paranoid about it. Like you go to the bathroom and look and I'm like, I'm good, but there's still that thought in my head. Like, well, what if there's poop I didn't see? What if yeah. it is there? Oh no. Yeah, what was the feeling like, in the smell. first place? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think that's just natural instinct. I mean, when you rip them, the crazy ass farts, you're like, okay, something definitely came out. And then you're like, <laughs> you're pleasant, surprised. You pull your pants down and you're like, boys we are in the clear so yeah um it, it just feels I get it. like it did you know it, it feels like everything just came out and it brought a little prize with it or something and you yeah. look and you're like how is that possible how is this clean there's no way <laughs> i i get that quite a bit unfortunately where it's like you because i don't like to fart like when i'm not at home because i'm what? always worried about like what if i just left a little mark or something that i'm gonna smell like uh. poop so I usually end up holding them in, which makes it a lot worse because then they keep building and building in this like crescendo yeah, of like gas. Yeah, it hurts. But whenever I do like let it out, I'm just like, yeah, I definitely just shit my <gasps> pants. Luckily, it hasn't happened yet, though. <laughs> Yo, I'm sorry, guys. I started this. I started the introduction of this podcast with poop talk and we're still talking about poop. And I always talk about poop. So That's my our brand. Apologies. This is a normal <laughs> yeah, episode. This, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <I'm getting> in. <laughs> If anything, you're a high caliber guest. You're like refined compared to what we normally talk about. <laughs> I, yeah, I, true. I thought you, I thought you were just like prepared, like you researched the podcast and you knew exactly what we wanted to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a checklist at home. It says like semen next, and then pedophiles, and then just down the list. <laughs> oh, I mean, have you guys ever pooped and came at the same time <laughs> on a pedophile? Yeah, thankfully no. <laughs> okay, yeah, thankfully no. <laughs> Do you have a funny jerk-off story, though? <laughs> oh, that's a classic. <laughs> a classic. Uh, okay, I don't have a funny jerk-off story, but I have a funny nut story. Yeah, okay. sure. Um, Run it. It's Good like, much. it's crazy because I cannot, I still can't really believe it happened. Um, <laughs> so, this was like 20, I don't know, 20, uh, no, 2019. This is actually the same tour that I ended up, man, I went through a lot this tour. Um, that was the poop <laughs> tour. And then I also dropped a bottle of kombucha that like exploded and a, a shrapnel went through an artery in my finger and I had to go get it stitched. And, and still to this day, I have no feeling in my middle finger on my right hand. And I had to go get it stitched and then I couldn't sleep because it was so fucking painful for, because it was like pulsating around my finger and i had to like wear a, like a like a like a cast on it because it would 
or, or it would like bulge with the blood. And I couldn't sleep for like mm. 10 days. It was, it was trash. Uh, but on this tour, I'm chilling in the backstage and uh, Young Gravy's, Young Gravy's tour manager, Vaughn, he, he brought some girls backstage and uh, I did not want to hang out with them at all. And then he pretty much like put me in this room and was like, yo, hook up with these girls, Alex. And I was like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this at all. And then they pretty much started hooking up with me. And long story short, <laughs> it, 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 I, I didn't, I mean, it's not like I didn't want to do it. I was just like, my finger was hurting and I just didn't feel good. <laughs> fucking pooped yourself yeah you're not making me <laughs> yeah i pooped myself and uh well the poop came like three weeks later but um, oh, okay, okay. so this is happening and i was like okay hey, whatever i'll do it this is dope i'm 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 cool uh kind of thing and uh what ended up happening is you know we started hooking up and she started uh giving me head and i swear to god i was like two percent erect and i came <laughs> i legitimately unironically nutted completely soft and the girl was like i have just dribbled and out. i came in like one millisecond i swear to god <laughs> and i was like look uh i oh i uh i was so <laughs> embarrassed i was like i was so embarrassed she's like i've never seen this happen before in my life and i was like me neither um and I like immediately just was like, hey, look, I'm so sorry. I'm so awkward right now. I need to go for a shower. And I just jumped in the shower and like just sat in the shower. And I was like, what the fuck just happened? And uh, <laughs> were you <laughs> and uh, yeah, were you worried about it? Like, like TMZ reporting on it or something or like an Instagram post going up talking about how you came in like one millisecond? Well, completely no, fun. I mean, like, I don't care. Sometimes it happens, but um, it's just I was like, I <clears throat> have never I, I was like. Let's say on a good day, you're at 100% when you're bonered up, right, boys? But I was mm -hmm. legit like 6%. I just, yeah. I don't know what got into me. I like, it was, it was a very fascinating experience. And I was like, I didn't know that you could even do that. But, you know, <laughs> every day you learn something new. I don't know if this was TMI, but uh, it was just a very interesting experience. And, uh, it's, it's kind of sounds like a sad experience it, sounds it was like, really yep, yeah it was there. sad it was a little it was a little traumatic to be honest but hey we're we're here and we uh, we persevere boys so amen so i actually <laughs> when i was younger i had a, a i wasn't six percent erect i was like semi but i did back during like my really <laughs> weird masturbatory habits era I did ejaculate with like a semi, so I wasn't fully erect. And when that happened, I was actually so <laughs> upset that I cried about it. Oh, <laughs> I th yeah. why? I thought there was something. I thought there was why, something why wrong. I, I thought there was something wrong because I like him. I didn't know you could even ejaculate without being like erect. I was only semi'd. Damn. I didn't know that either. I mean, how how the, would that even work? Like, how do you reach or like that level of sensation? Mm. Yeah. But it just it just comes dude like <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't know yo cor correct me if i'm wrong i feel like a lot of the time a lot of the time uh when i am intercoursing uh mm -hmm. if i if i'm like if i think the 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 counterpart is like i want to like, wife this girl up like unironically like i need to i need to be really you know, good in bed or, or impress the lady. I feel like I, I never actually nut, if that makes sense. Whereas sometimes when I'm like, I don't know why I'm really doing this. I feel like I was just a horny boy. And I feel like I, I don't really see a future with this woman. Woman, I feel like I nut way faster. I don't know if that is a, a you're just trying to thing. get your your fix maybe like psychologically you're like i just want to come and then be done i don't i don't know if that's a normal thought but i was having this conversation with my my dj because he was like i dude i i met this girl she's definitely very bad for me but it the sex is way better whereas this this woman that is way better for me i have way less sexual desire with her but like i just can't come because i want to impress her as well so it's like 
I don't know. You know, do you guys, do you guys ever experience that? I, I feel like maybe I've experienced that a few times, but I, I don't know. I, I yeah, don't, for sure. Really you want to pace like yourself and you want her to be pleased yeah. before you get off. Whereas I assume if you're yep, just touring yeah. and fucking random groupies, you don't really care. Yeah. And then in those moments sometimes as well, you just get tired. Like it, it just goes on long and you're just maintaining it and all that. And then eventually you're like, oh God, wait, this isn't working anymore. Like the, it doesn't even feel good. It's like, Jesus, it's just yeah. so much. It's not weird. This is fi- finally an opportunity for me to, to gauge the, the, the classroom here. Did you guys, have you ever like, when you're hooking up with someone new for the first time, you just can't get erect? Or is that is that just me? Because that's like the worst <laughs> feeling in the world. That just happens. No, sometimes. I mean every single mm. millisecond I'm I'm hard AF twenty four. Damn. Yeah. So Yeah, I'm hard right now. It's convenient. <laughs> I'm hard whenever I meet new people yeah. in general. <laughs> every time you shake hands. <laughs> we touch tips hard to meet you I mean nice to meet you you're psyching yourself out that's all it is yeah Yeah, it is it's called performance anxiety stage fright yeah I had the opposite problem where uh, I would get off too early when hooking up with random chicks yeah this was like a while ago because it was it was all mental and it was the opposite thing it was like oh my god I'm gonna get laid Oh my god, that's amazing. Oh, it's gonna feel so good. This is so cool. And then, oh shit. Oops. Sorry. And it happened, <laughs> re- I don't know what the word is, regularly, like more than yeah. a couple a couple times, you know, handful. And then eventually I was like, oh, okay, it's, I'm just thinking about it too much. Just gotta relax, chill out. Mm-hmm. For me, though, it's always like the first time, like with someone new, I can, I, like, it just, it won't happen. So I get so embarrassed and so, like, I feel so bad. So like I'll t- <laughs> like the last time it happened, I remember like I tried everything. I was slapping my nuts, <laughs> like I was doing anything. Oh, to oh, like, that's oh. gonna make it worse. No, that's gonna suck your nuts will make it way worse. Oh. Like, I, I tried to like masturbate it out. I tried slapping it out, trying to beat it like an old <laughs> money to just make it just make it do something. Holy moly! The thing that feels yeah. even worse, in my opinion, it feels bad when it happens to you, whatever it may be. You're you're not hard, you're, you're too fast, something awkward happens, whatever. That feels bad, but the thing that makes it worse is when you look at her, and she's not the understanding type, and yeah. she's very clearly oh, disappointed, no. and I'm just like, oh, fuck. Oh, <laughs> god damn it. No. I haven't, I haven't had that happen yet, luckily. <laughs> that, oh, that'd be you're, traumatizing. You're fucking saved by angels, my friend. That's one of the worst feelings in the world when your date is like that. Oh, but I don't man. get the, I don't get the, the idea, like the, the idea behind that, because you can still have fun even without like a, you know, raging. That's besides boner. the point. You still... Do you not know how women are? Yeah. Uh, that is the biggest insult on earth to her. In that moment, yeah. is, that's, yeah. that's always hard and, enough. And too. some women, some women mm. get it in their head that they just want to get fucked, like just have sex with the man. And if they don't get it, they just get super. You know, some women are petty about it. Some are really just immature about it, and they let you know. Oh, they let you know. <laughs> it's not great. A long time ago, actually, like th- this has been a, like that's been something with me since Jesus, since I was like in college. <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago, like one of the one of the girls I was hooking up with for the first time, like it was happening and, and I'd already like eaten her out and I was like, I am so sorry for this. Do you want me to just eat you out again? She said no. And I was like, Yep, that sounds yeah. about right. <laughs> you, <laughs> oh, then, yeah. Yeah. I I had and a girl that was the kind of the end of that. I had a girl yeah, in college again. where she was like, Yeah, you know, I, I got a car, I'll meet you here, blah 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 blah. And then we hung out, did the date thing, whatever, and then we were gonna fool around in her car and she was like doing stuff and blowing me whatever and i was like oh just get me off now and then like you know we can keep doing stuff and it'll be great and so she did and then i was like you know doing stuff to her and eventually she just starts saying oh i want your dick i want your dick so bad and i'm just thinking i'm not i'm not ready yet i can't i can't go (laughs) and i'm ready Eventually, yeah. just stopped working, and she started putting her clothes back on. It was like I'm done oh. here. And I was like, oh, wait, fuck, wait, okay, wait, wait, wait. You, wasn't that wasn't that when you were visiting me here in Tampa? Because I remember you like excused been, yeah. yourself to go meet a girl, and you were like, that didn't uh, go well. Yeah, I think that was when I was at your house, and I said, Charlie, I have to go get laid real quick, and I left for that night and came back later. Yeah. <laughs> and he yeah, told me it was. didn't go super well. <laughs> no, it was not. It, it, it was going great until. 
the middle of that when I was doing stuff to her and she's just like, oh, I know I need you to fuck me. I need dick. And then I was like, I can't get hard. And, you know, it was too soon. You got to wait a little bit longer. And she just wouldn't wait. <laughs> Excuse me, madam. Up. I just need some time on the bench to rest and recuperate. <laughs> God, that's always annoying when they think that any man can fuck 24 seven at the drop of a hat, like on commands. That's not how it works. There are some men that are dummy horny, man. Like that is true. I've, that, yeah. they're, they're like true. some men. That's all they think about at every given moment of their day. But it's you like, are horny though. You went. You went to the car to fuck her. <laughs> I'm confused as to how you can't get hard in that situation. It sounds well, he, like it already. Something. He just. He just came. Oh, you mean he me? Just, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he just oh, came. you just came. I had just kicked. Okay, so we fooled around in her car and she blew me. And I was like, oh, actually, I, I, I think I'm going to get off. You should just finish this. And like, then we'll do stuff. We'll keep doing stuff. Like, I wasn't going to be like, oh, we're done here. So she did. And then after not much of me fooling around with her, she's like, oh, I need your dick. I, okay. I need to get okay, fucked. Yeah. And I was Fair like, enough. dude, that, I just that's, came. What do you so want from me? That's so unrealistic. Yeah, that's so unrealistic. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. Boring. What do you want me to do? That's I poor, just that's came like two or three minutes ago. Yeah, I'm that's just a man. Planning. Yeah. Definitely porn brain. Definitely porn brain. I just had I boys, I just had sex two nights ago. And I came with, <laughs> and yeah, I was really buddy. trying good shit. The the lady, I was really trying to impress her. Uh and it did not go well the first time. And I was like, okay, well, now I'm genuinely just gonna be honest. I'm pretty insecure about my performance there. So let's just talk about other things for 20 minutes and then let's get back into it. <laughs> and then I went sicko mode and I went full Mo Bamba slash Shaq West Travis Scott on her and uh, she was like way more impressed and it was great so it's just like yep. yeah and and I, right before I went out with her I was like okay I need to I need a nut now so I can actually try <laughs> and do a decent job uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and I even told her that I was like I, I literally jacked off right before I came to see you so I could try to to make the first one a little bit more impressionable but it, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work so yeah <laughs> what did you guys talk about for 20 minutes it's like yeah so uh do you think anthony edwards hurt his hand on that like huge dunk <laughs> I, don't up with that. I don't know we were actually it was it was like one of them great conversations just like chilling uh really like smart lady talking about shitting on stage and so stuff like that yeah, <laughs> yeah pooping on stage coming early you know the vibes yeah. yeah i'm a lady did i ever tell you the time where i pooped my pants <laughs> <laughs> did you tell her you were gonna finger her with your numb finger so you'd never have to stop you just go forever <laughs> i don't oh, even Jack feel Amber, it yeah. she's yeah. like more I, can't, I can't feel it <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is my good finger <laughs> this is my finger and finger <laughs> Uh, well, perhaps you considered, Mr. Baby No Money, after uh, all that pillow talk, residing on a Helix sleep mattress mm. oh. with your date. Would that be would that be an option in your wheelhouse? Oh, fantastic. That sounds like a great time. And it's definitely endorsed by Baby No Money. <laughs> it absolutely is endorsed by Baby No Money. And it is, in fact, a good time because this podcast is sponsored by Helix Sleep Mattress. The mattress that all the official boys have tried. All the official boys have slept on, and you have an audible soundbite of Mr. Baby No Money saying that he endorses it. The Helix <laughs> Sleep Quiz on their website is going to match you with the perfect model mattress for you, including soft, medium, or firm, and will decide if you want one for sleeping on your side, back, stomach, or whatever you prefer. The point is that they have a large catalog of mattresses for any style of sleep that you could possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. I remember telling the story on the show before, but I'm going to tell it again. I got my girlfriend's dad a Helix mattress for Christmas because his old one was falling apart. He absolutely loves it, and I remember when shopping for it, it was easy. It just gave me all these options to pick from on how you prefer to sleep and your price range and all that, and eventually shipped right to your door in a box, drag it inside, open it up, let it kind of decompress, and then boom, you have a extremely comfortable mattress delivered right to your house, customized exactly how you would like it. And you're also going to get a wonderful offer with this podcast. Helix is offering 20% off of all mattress orders and two free pillows for all of our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash official and use code helixpartner20. So that's helixpartner20. But the website is helixsleep.com slash official. 
It's their best offer yet and will not last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Same URL as normal, but the code is HELIXPARTNER20. And now that you are fully rested, relaxed, and feeling good, it might be time to wake up and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I slept really good, but were my genitals well supported throughout the night? And then you're going to flip your covers open and go, oh my god. They were, thanks to Me Undies. Me Yay. Undies is now unveiling their latest gift to help, and I'm reading this verbatim, help men feel big. The contoured pouch <laughs> and ball caddy. It is a micromodal sling that will keep things separated, lifted, and looking good. Nine out of ten women swear this sophisticated brief technology will make you look huge. Very relevant to this whole episode. Very, very... You know, kind of coincidental that that happens to be what we're talking about. I own many pairs of MeUndies. I know for a fact Charlie owns pairs of MeUndies. We went to a movie, changed on set. I saw them. They were very cute. I don't remember what kind they were, but I knew they were MeUndies. I just ordered new pairs for myself. Get the pink ones with the blue pandas on them. They're my favorite. Absolutely my favorite. They're under, like, adventurous or bold. There's some category. Doesn't matter. They're made of micromodal, so they're ex modal, excuse me, micromodal, so they're very, very soft, sizes extra small to 4XL, flattering cuts for every kind of body, different cuts for every kind of person. They have women's sizes and styles as well. My girlfriend wears them. They are all you could ever ask for in underwear. They will also give you a free return if you're not happy. Good things come in big packages at MeUndies. Get 20% off your first order plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash official pod. That's MeUndies.com slash official pod, P-O-D, short for podcast, for 20% off plus free shipping. MeUndies, comfort from the outside in. Nice. That's it. Thank you, MeUndies. So back to the conversation of men. Are you guys, are you guys like truly self conscious of your penis size? No, I think no. everyone is to a certain extent, right? Like you always <laughs> want it to be bigger, but I wouldn't say self conscious. It's just one of those things, like yeah, no. an inch, an inch would be nice. No, yeah, an inch would be nice. Maybe yeah. when I was younger and I cared, but at this point, even if hypothetically it's like, oh, it's small, whatever. Like who cares? It's it is what it is. You can't change it, you know. Well, I think you can change it, right? Yeah, you, can. you can get dick <laughs> Yeah, if you beat dogs. it hard enough. True. Yeah. I could get that joking. surgery. But Start joking, I don't bro. know. A lot of the time <laughs> I would be like, because like I'm, I'm pretty average. I'm like a, on a really good day. I'm like, th I think I'm like a six. I'm like an incredible day. I don't know what kind of a day that would be, but yeah, that's average. Um, that's nothing to be ashamed of. That's, that's kind average. of my point. It's fine. We're all, no, it's, all four of us on this show are part of the average club. You're in good company. We're fine. Totally. But it's like sometimes I would just be like, or I've heard from several women, it's like, if it's too big, it's just not fun. And I have yeah. a boyfriend mm -hmm. dick. So it's like the dick that you want to have sex with that is normalized. And it's like, it's fine. But, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, it would be dope to be like, I have a big cock, but I don't. So. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that sounds like Jackson. All right. It would be. Yeah. I mean, there's like the masculine urge to like have the biggest dick in the room at all time. You know, like just yeah. just knowing yeah. that is like something cool and comforting. But like, it's not it wouldn't be sustainable. Like, it wouldn't be something fun. Like, there, you'd probably get a lot more. Uh, as contradictory as it seems, the people who talk the most about wanting bigger dick and bigger dick sizes is men, men to other men. Yeah. You know, most women, most, not all, but most women really don't care as long as you have a functional dick, you know? Yeah, yeah I was going to say, there, there, there is, there is, sadly, there is a lower limit here where it's like micro penis territory, then yeah, you're kind yeah. of fucked. Like, that's yeah, rough. at that point, you're kind of fucked. Yes, for sure. And that's going to, that's going to suck. That has to imagine yeah. have imagine not having a micro. And <laughs> oh wait! That <laughs> Did I say average club earlier? I meant the micro club. We're all part of the micro club here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it really like, really, it's like they only care what you can do with it. You know, I used to be yeah. a competitive swimmer, so I got I got hips. So. Um, it kind of helps, nice. you know, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, but, and, uh, and even then, for most women, it doesn't, like, do much. Like, most women get off from their clit. 
doing stuff yeah. to that and your dick in them isn't really doing much there you know it doesn't matter <laughs> doing stuff to that like you're casting like a ninjutsu or something with your hands <laughs> on it. fucking blasting entering the entering the hyper combo <laughs> like and show Ryukin it, it into Bolivia yeah. doing like a Helldivers 2 stratagem code on her clip <laughs> <laughs> Man, Helldivers, crazy game. That game is stress 101. Banger stress, game, it though. is joy. It slaps. It is, it so, is so good. I mean, so it, is, it, is, it is joy, but it's just like, I feel like every time I'm jumping in, I'm like, holy fuck, holy shit. I don't know what's going on. Like, I'm not that good. I have only played like five games, but I feel like it's, it's definitely one of those games that you, you can probably rapidly get good at and figure out like spacing and like positioning it, but holy shit it's overwhelming it's ridiculous i i That's don't play great. many games anymore game. but once in a while a game comes out that just addicts me like a bitch like Absolute i'm actually you. sometimes yeah. i get withdrawal symptoms mm -hmm. from not hell diving enough mm -hmm. even if i held over like five hours the previous day and it's stressful but the good kind of stress somehow because when i play like against other yeah. players like league of legends or anything that requires skill because i'm very bad at video games that does stress me out because if I lose, I'm just a loser. I got nothing. And Helldivers is just, we're all together. We're a band of brothers. We're That's shooting fun. bugs. And even losing yeah. is fun. <laughs> like it's just chaotic even fun. That is yeah, fun. It's just like, it is. It's just chaotic fun. I've gotten the same exact way, Kai, over the years. And I don't know if this applies to you guys, but when I was younger, most of the games I would play, vast majority, was like competitive online stuff, like Call of Duty and Battlefield and this and that, and like all these, you know, shooters and fighters, Street Fighter, Marvel, Capcom, whatever. But now these days, most of what I play is like co-op, single player, and it's because I feel so much more like relaxed, like more I know, enjoying something... it, even when it is yeah. stressful, you know? I don't feel like I'm having to compete with someone who's inevitably gonna be better than me anyway some fucking 17 year old twerp with a 300 dollar razor mouse playing like an aimbot is gonna destroy me what's the point of this yeah. i just want to unwind exactly and i just want to play with yeah. my friends not against anybody and I, I don't know call me a pussy but that i enjoy that so much more co-op games there needs to be more co-op games co-op games are like some of the best totally games. agree four player co-op campaigns are the best fun ever had in a video game and i will stand by that forever it's never yeah, it's been beaten. Super fun. Uh, oh, yeah. I just, I, I just got a Steam Deck. Do you guys have any recommendations of what games I should get? Uh, I need well, what, offline what are you into? play. I have... I mean, I'm pretty much... I mean, realistic. I'm the biggest wild frog in the world. Uh, so, like, top-down RPGs are... I'm a big fan of Diablo 2. It's probably one of my favorite Diablo, games. Diablo, yeah. Uh, does Baldur's say, Gate but, 3 run on the Steam Deck? Because I feel like that'd be a slam dunk for you. Wait, which one? Baldur's Gate. <laughs> I, I think just, I, I, my I, sorry, Baldur's Gate Three. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, probably. I mean, I I heard it's a really fun game, and I heard you can have it like s sex and do crazy things in it. Yeah, yeah. you can fuck a bear. You can fuck a and bear. It's funny. <laughs> what? <laughs> Selling point. And we're and we're back to sex, boys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that's a good choice because when I when I went to the airport recently, uh, in the fucking Payway restaurant there, there was a girl at a counter playing Baldur's Gate three on her Steam Deck. So I'm gonna assume it'll work. And I'd recommend yeah. it if you like WoW and stuff like well, that. Well, yeah, but well, does, do you like like very story heavy games though? Um, not as much as just hacking and slashing. Um, yeah, I see. That's good, but good I downloaded Last there. Epoch, and I was playing it on my computer, and then I downloaded it on my Steam Deck to play, and it was just like not that compatible at all. Uh, so mm. I'm just not sure like what a very compatible game is because I haven't found one yet, and it's like the play style is a little bit. I mean, I'm not usually a controller guy, so I'm a PC dude. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Proton DB, and they have a list, I think. Well, actually, Steam also has mm -hmm. their own curated page, right? Yeah. For the most compatible games. It's great yeah. on, yeah. Verified the list is on like deck. great on, yeah. yeah, great on Steam Deck. There's on the front page of the Steam Deck. What I really like about Steam, what they do is, um, when there is a really popular game, they go out of their way. They probably have like a dedicated team for each game where they explicitly just make it more compatible for the Steam Deck and Linux in general. So you can run nice. these games like, Helldivers and Baldur's Gate both work flawlessly on Linux and the Steam Deck because of this. But Helldivers, yeah. can you play Helldivers offline or no? No, no I don't think so. Yeah. Mm. 
Oh, actually, yeah, no, 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 no. You might, you might be able to dive solo. I, I, I don't think it's always. I, I don't know why remember. you would though. Like, I can't imagine that being nearly as fun as squatting up. Obviously, no, it is not. Like, I played it solo. Mm. It's still fun. It's just a fun yeah. game. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it really is a fun game. I don't know what I would recommend on Steam Deck. Really, I've. I mean, it's great. I love using my Steam Deck, but I've only really been using it to play uh, Persona, like the Persona games. I've been going through them yeah. lately. But mm-hmm. those are very story heavy as well, and I don't know if you'd be into that. Um, what else is there? There's Bellatro. If you like, if you like card games, there's Bellatro. That just came out, and it's a lot of fun. Bellatro's excellent. Yeah, Bellatro's extremely fucking good. But it's a card game. Yeah, I heard it's super fun. Yeah, I don't know. I got to yeah. figure it out. Maybe, maybe I will like Baldur's Gate three because I, I don't know. Everyone I've ever talked to about it is like, Alex, you'll love it. You should play it. It's like the best game ever made. Yeah, so. yeah. The I best mean, I'm sure struggling a bit bad. when you said when you said you wanted to do like the RPG kind of number crunching battling experience because I feel like without mouse and keyboard that doesn't translate nearly yeah, as well. That'd be pretty but hard. In my mind, I think Baldur's Gate three in terms of quality and getting close to what you want is probably the best recommendation I can think of. Oh, oh, what about a uh, Hades? Hades would be great on the Steam Deck. Mm, yeah. Okay, maybe Hades, maybe. It, Have you played Hades? more live action than World of Warcraft to a degree, but... Yeah, I played a little bit of it. I mean, it, in reality, I'd love to play WoW offline. That sounds like a fucking movie, but unfortunately, <laughs> un- unfortunately you can't do that, you know? I tried yeah, downloading yeah. The, the, the Blizzard client so I could play Diablo 2, but it just wasn't working, unfortunately, on it. I don't know. I've tried following a guide, but... What about uh, Path to Exile? Isn't that, like, similar no, to Path Diablo? Path Path yeah, of Exile we, is really good, but yeah. I think you have to play. You have to play online, and I just like yep, kind of want oh, online yeah. mode so offline, I can play yeah. like mm. in random places. Yeah, gotcha. So it sounds like sounds like Baldur's Gate three is the play. That might be the play. That's uh, what yeah. I'd say. How how is? I mean, have you have you guys played it on Steam Deck or no? Uh, no. I haven't. Not that specifically, but I have played a good handful of things, and it's kind of okay. It's like hit or miss whether or not they work. You usually have to tweak the graphics and you can you can find like a workable state for anything. Some games run perfectly, other games they they work, you know. It it'll do. So it depends. A lot of okay. it's con- like the controller mapping for me is sometimes fucked up, but mm. usually it's really good. And I was just going to say the bigger issue with like strategy games and role playing games is that there's so much text to read and the game was obviously not designed mm. for such a yeah. tiny screen. So you're going to be squinting a lot or you're going to have to use their really clumsy like zoom in thing where you have to hold like three different buttons in order to zoom in on the screen and it's not as yeah. comfortable as just see that you're... that's yeah. that's what i was encountering with <laughs> me playing last epoch it was just like i was like what the fuck where am i supposed to click this and i would have to click on screen to to download or to even see my inventory on last epoch and i was like okay hey, well this sucks yeah, yeah, so yeah. i just like yeah deleted it but you like, yeah, it's the Steam Deck, so you're going to be like sacrificing like user friendliness and stuff like that for just the portability of it. You can't, you can't yeah. have like the best of both worlds, sadly. But yeah, I will it's say though, really it's pretty product. comfortable and the, the screen is ginormous. No, it's, it's, it's things. great. It's a great piece of heart. Uh, what I'm surprised about with the Steam Deck as well, more and more, is the fucking speakers on it are fantastic as well. They're, like they're really good speakers. Yeah. They yeah. sound great. The screen's good too. No, I'm really happy. Do you have the Steam original Deck. or the OLED? The original. Uh, I would assume. I I don't know. They just like sent it to me, like uh, some because I I, oh. I did I did something at a I did a, a CS:GO sound kit, and then my friend who works there was like, "Hey, you want one?" And I was like, "Yeah, I definitely do." And uh, I've just been trying to make good use out of it right now, but haven't found the game mm. yet. So, did you? What did you do beforehand, like, without the Steam Deck, whenever you go on these trips or, like, traveling around and stuff, would you just take a Nintendo Switch? Uh, I had a Switch, but I would just always kind of go back and default to play Diablo 2. On, on, I would literally bring an extra computer just to play Diablo 2, because I have a MacBook, and, you know, Battle.net shit doesn't really run on uh, yeah, or yeah. no Diablo 2 games, and I don't want to boot, boot camp it or bootstrap it, whatever it is. Um, but... Most of the time, I just do that or play like Binding on I- Binding of Isaac. Um, oh, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. Binding of Isaac Super. is a phenomenal fucking game. Wait, wouldn't that work really well on Steam Deck? 
Yeah. For sure. But I I mean, I might as well just play it on my laptop. Cause yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's also it's not the kind of, it's not like World of Warcraft what he's looking for. Um, yeah, I'm, so, I'm just, I'm addicted to that game. It's, it's the best game. <laughs> still so to this I, day, I do you play a, like a, classic or have you moved on to, or do you still play retail? Uh, I was playing retail until like WoW Classic kind of really rolled out. I played SOD up to 25 and then I got really busy and I had to go back into writing music mode. Um, I mean, I've been playing since since the beginning kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well. Yeah, I love that game so much. I did a bit of a Google for you on games that would probably scratch your itch. The two that keep coming up if you want like offline World of Warcraft are Kingdoms of Amalur. And Ooh. Final Fantasy whoa. Twelve. King, whoa, whoa, whoa! Kingdoms of Am. Wait, back the fuck up! Kingdoms of Amalur. Yeah, what? It's an EA game, isn't it? It's like really bad. That's that. Yeah, it, that, that's that old super flop from 2012. It got remastered like two years ago, and people say the remaster is actually pretty good. Oh, you know what? Reckoning review. Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm yeah, I'm looking yeah. it up right now. Yeah. I, it was like kind of like Fable, right? Yeah, it was very Fable esque. It was made, wasn't it made by like a sports guy who just really loved? Um, yeah, yeah, I remember that. I believe it bankrupted the company that made it. I think it did. It did. A hundred percent. I remember that for sure. Oh, I remember Ooh. seeing this game when it first came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Xbox 360. Yeah, this is interesting. I mean, yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah, I mean, that's just what I found from Googling. Like, a, lo- a lot of people also say there's nothing like World of Warcraft, you're fucked. So, better that yeah, than yeah. nothing, I guess, you know. I mean, I'm excited for the new, uh, I mean, I know Riot is making an MMO right now. I have no idea what it's going to be like or anything, but I just, like, I've heard through the grapevine, and that is, I have high hopes, because Riot has not fucked up any other games, to be honest. But Yeah, they always do crossed. a pretty good job. It'll yeah, probably be pretty yeah. good. Yeah. I think that'll be the wow killer. The the new fighting game that they're making is like the dumbest name. I can't remember it off the top yeah. of my head though. Two X K O. Oh yeah. Yeah, something like that. It's so fucking dumb. Two well, X K O. Maybe 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 I spoke too soon. But the game looks <laughs> no, great. The name is just dog shit. Yeah. It's a it's a yeah. good looking game, but the name is terrible. I agree. I <laughs> oh, agree yeah. with you though, baby. If if there is gonna be a game that like dethrones World of Warcraft, it's probably going to come from riot yeah also i did They've just double money, check yeah it was kurt schilling kurt schilling the baseball pitcher was the one who founded the <laughs> 38 studios which created kingdoms of amalur and three months later they laid off their entire staff from severe <laughs> financial troubles <laughs> oh no pain he, uh, pain the original <laughs> layoff wow Damn, that but I, I, that's good. Well, it's currently on Steam. It's a it's a four year old remaster, and it's got a positive rating. So I don't know. Try it. See if you like it. Yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, honestly, it sounds it sounds like it sounds like Baldur's Gate is the play. It's also currently on sale yeah. for ten bucks. So what do you got to lose? Yeah, you're helping bucks. Kurt at the end of the day. If he had to hire his team back, <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Um, I remember I was I was just like chilling on Twitter and like Mike Morheim, the like one of the OG creators of World of Warcraft, like made some post about what was happening at Blizzard. And then I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna DM him. And I DM'd him and he replied and I remember he announced that he was like working at like a like Dreamhaven. It's like this new kind of development yeah. company. And I was just like, hey man, if you ever need like voiceover or like music, I like I'll do it for free. I don't give a shit. Uh so he he was like, yeah, I got you, and I was like, whoa, the one of the creators of fucking World of Warcraft messaged me. So it's uh, so cute. It's yeah, so cute. it was very, it was a very, uh, very <coughs> cool moment in my life. But um, maybe maybe what? there will be a wild killer. I, I I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know if anything will like beat the highs that WoW had in terms of like MMOs. It, it won't, it won't. That, that's yeah. not going to happen, but uh, I don't know if you guys saw yeah. just today, World of Warcraft announced their Battle Royale mode, 
Plunderstorm. I don't know if you saw that this morning. Whoa! What? Really? Yeah, they got a they they got their own battle royale mode, and it looks like trash. Whoa! Plunderstorm, <laughs> no. dude. Is this is this okay? What is this? This is in World of Warcraft. Yeah, it's a World of Warcraft. Here, let me look it up. Real is quick. it first just person sure. or is it just like you're playing no. a WoW character? It's wow like it looks like you're playing a WoW mod. So basically, here they made in World of Warcraft their own battle royale. So they've been developing this in secret for quite a while, and in their next patch, so ten point two point six, Plunderstorm is being introduced. It sounds well, actually, it launched today. Wow! So it's a sixty-player battle royale. Dude, Classic that Blizzard, actually sounds kind of like, fun. I mean, yeah, but like also they're like seven years late by this point with Battle Royale. They're right? so late to it. it. It does not look good. I'm going to tell you right now, baby. It is not like from what I saw from the gameplay, it does not look good. Granted, I'm only a recent WoW player. Like I only really got into it in Dragonflight and, and I'm more of a raider than anything in that game. But this did not look like a very fun game mode. Well, I mean, the thing about the th- thing about WoW now is it's like it's it's too easy. It's like too accessible. It's like. <laughs> it, it is pretty easy. <laughs> I would say like the the peak of WoW for me was Watluk and like Wrath of the Lich King era. It was just something about it the the simplicity yet the complexities of the game were yeah, just like, yeah, perfectly yeah. leveled. Whereas now it's like all right, more explosions and uh, uh, you know I'm happy that more people play it and they have the you know, like opportunity and they allow people to play and have an easy, but it makes it less interesting easy right? entry point but it's so yeah it's like just it feels like they just don't care anymore which i don't think they do but well it's blizzard blizzard know. just fucking sucks now man blizzard is like so bad yeah they're kind of a shell of what they used to be that they're still able to add new game modes to a 20 year old engine it, that is kind of impressive yeah. in of itself yeah I feel like if they stopped, I mean, the day that they stop is is going to be one of the saddest days when they're like, all right, there's ever, no more updating. Yeah, I don't, I don't think World they'll stop, right? I don't think Unless that day's like, ever going to come. Wow I think, too. yeah, and, and <laughs> while Blizzard isn't as good as they once were or anything, they are making huge updates to World of Warcraft pretty often. Like the patches are big, like the new content drops they do are big, like their most recent raid. I didn't do their most recent raid, but Matt and Danny have been loving the new raid from them. Like they still do a good job. And I really did enjoy Dragonflight. Like I enjoyed going through Heroic and everything. It's super fun. So I don't think it's going to die anytime soon, but it's just not the company itself is just not going in good directions. Blizzard is capable of fucking anything up, though. That's what I've learned. Like, you look they at are, like, and people Overwatch. don't care. Look they still Overwatch play it. Yeah. Shit like that. Even Diablo, the most recent Diablo, was, like, fantastic on, well, it was fun on launch. Like, really, it, it was set up really nicely, and then it's just nothing. Nothing since then has been, like, cool or exciting. Yeah. The um the Diablo phone game announced was such a huge debacle, <laughs> and yet that game is extremely popular and people play it all the time. True, yeah. Yeah, Didn't I mean, it's wait, just wait, phone. What? Yeah, it's phone game on Diablo. It's like our phone accessibility on Diablo. It's like I play it because it's still Diablo. You know, if yeah. you're such a fan of these things, it's like whether or not it's like well done, it doesn't really matter because it's still one of your favorite yeah. titles, right? So it's unfortunate, but. Did you grow up playing other MMOs? Like, did you play RuneScape and stuff like that? Yeah, I played RS. I played Ragnarok, Maple Story. I I kind of played like everything. I just like couldn't find myself getting, um, you know, emulsified in the world like yeah. super well. You know, I would wake up. I would come back from like swimming practice at like six thirty seven in the morning, and I would like pour myself up a ginormous bowl of cereal, cinnamon toast crunch, and I would just play WoW for like 12 hours straight. And I was just like, this is all I want to do today. I'm so happily <laughs> like level 24 in Hillsbred killing orcs. You know what I mean? Like that was, that made me so happy. And I just vividly remember. And you've been chasing that nostalgia. feeling ever since as well. Yeah. <laughs> like there's nothing yeah, that, yeah, that- to replace that <laughs> feeling of that game that just hooks you like that. I mean, occasionally, you know, when when Diablo 4 came out, I told my whole team, I was like, I'm turning my phone off for five days, so go fuck yourself. So uh, 
I played it for five days straight and, you know, even to the point where I, I went home and I was playing at home in my parents in my parents' place and my mom was like, she knew how important Diablo is to me and she was like just making me food. It was so fire. Um, and uh, I love my mom, so but uh, it was, it, it, you know, once I got to max level and I finished the game, I was just like, like, what is there to do? There's no community. Yeah. Like, they keep on taking the community aspect of all of their games and just throwing in the garbage. I know. It's so frustrating. All for like player safety and stuff like that or whatever. Whatever the reason is, it's so stupid that it's like games have lost that kind of special, special community aspect. It's like, I remember like Halo, like Halo 3, like logging on every day, playing with like friends and and making like meaningful connections. Sure, you get like people like shouting and stuff at you, but it was like the most fun in gaming at the time, just having that kind of community you know charm to when it. you would you don't hop get into that a game of call anymore. of duty when you would hop into a game of call of duty and everyone was yes. in the voice chat and people would <laughs> yeah, just either yeah. say stupid shit or scream at each other it was great now everyone plays video games i mean myself included i'm guilty of this but everyone just plays in their own discord call and, and doesn't even mm-hmm. use the voice chat it's very rare when you hear people yeah. talking in it yeah yeah it's so fucking lame man i don't it's just so neutered yeah it's kind of sad, oh, well. but it. I, I think, I think, I mean, I feel like games are slowly starting to realize that that is like one of the more important things. Like I remember Diablo 2, Warcraft, Starcraft, like the, the server selection zone. That, in my opinion, was something that if Diablo 3 had and Diablo 4 had and like more of like that free realm, free roamingness, mm. you would be totally fine. The game would have been perfect. I just have no idea why they don't include those things where it's like, you know, not just locked and like also like the soul boundness of items where you can't trade. Mm-hmm. It's just like, why, why don't you guys want to create a market off platform like like D2 GSP? I, I've just never fully understood some of the decisions that they've made, but that's also just my opinion. So I'm sure that there's I'm sure that there's like research of people being frustrated. Yeah, with I mean, of the game, but. I just like, don't get it sometimes. One of my one of my favorite anecdotes about this is like looking at the development of Destiny. They hired a team of psychologists to to actually like create the addictive elements of the Destiny game. <laughs> so they clearly know what they're doing to create like, you know, uh components of these games that'll keep people coming back. Like they hire genuine like psychologists and stuff to consult with them about that kind of stuff. It's just never made sense to me either because it well, it, yeah, with it Destiny, did work on you. It, with mm-hmm. Destiny, it did. And also, Destiny is like one of the one games in the last like decade that I think still does have that like community charm, really. Like, there's a full community based yeah, around Yeah, hating the that, game like, together. <laughs> like, that's well, now, cool. <laughs> now. Buff Silver Surfers from the 80s, man, really brings the community together. No, but you can't, you can't deny that that, like, that, that was... That, community itself was pretty similar to like the halo community and stuff like you know yeah but in that time that's, period that's kind of like that's a separate thing though that's just people loving the game together like in destiny from the very get-go i don't recall like like if you're just pubbing like pugging with like randoms for raids like you're not like there's no built-in functionality for that you're not like meeting people mm-hmm. that way right like that's the social element i think that they were talking about yeah you could still meet people like you'd still be put but you uh, do it randomly through with them no, you would do it in like in game and stuff like that, but you wouldn't be able to like directly communicate with them unless you were like friends, and then you could exactly, talk. yeah, yeah. That's fair. So it's not it's not necessarily the same. Like the community, like there is a huge community aspect of the game, but not in the way where like old Xbox where people yelling at each other, you make friends that way, just through, like <laughs> yeah. you're shit talking the other team together. Like yeah, that was good shit talk, brother. You want to party up? Let's ride and that kind of stuff. Yeah, but to, again with like Destiny, I've made so many. Th- well, I had made so many friends through Destiny, way more than like pretty much any other game. So I, I still feel like the community aspect there is strong enough to like foster those kinds of friendships and stuff. Whereas like other games that release now, it's like there's nothing there that drives that kind of relationship ever. Even in like Diablo 4, I played through Diablo 4, same as Baby pretty much for the first five days. And I didn't meet anyone. Like there was no kind of you know, drive yeah. to engage with anyone. Yeah. I remember when I was playing T2 back when I was like legit 14 or like 13, I, uh, I started this scam called free for trust. Long story short, 
Like, <laughs> you couldn't scam anyone. You couldn't piss anyone off in, in Diablo 3 and 4. Like, yeah, you could just shit talk them on, on chat, but you can't, like, actually make them feel something. And I think, like, <laughs> the, the, uh, the ability to, like, humanize people or, like, actually make people feel something while playing the game, like, gives you the ability to be positive or negative on them but at the same time it's like these games are too safe like i understand yeah. like yeah just squelch the swearing and like have trigger words that's fine but like i want to i want to get scammed i, I remember scam. when someone yeah. <laughs> it's the when, dynamic when thought, it's the dynamic <laughs> yeah. <of> it. yeah. <laughs> Exa exactly and it's it's so interesting because i remember when someone stole my full tal rasha set because i trusted that i would i could x <laughs> it like so so transfer it to a new character and he took it all and then I remember I, I cried. I literally unironically was crying. <laughs> and I was like, that doesn't happen anymore because all this soul bound shit. And it's like, I, I, I think that's like another really, really strong aspect of, of old video gaming that would be great if they implemented it. Exciting. Back, but, uh, it know. was exciting. Yeah. You were absolutely right. Yeah. You just yeah. want to do this to other kids. You just want revenge. Yeah, you, you just, just want, want your revenge now. Get your it's still alive and well in RuneScape. And in RuneScape, you still have that element. There's like certain mitigating things they've done recently where you can't do some of the scams, but scamming is still very much alive in RuneScape. And I, I agree. I remember how important that was to learn not to just trust strangers. When I was a yes. kid, I think I was yeah. in fourth grade. I had just got like a crazy drop. It was an adamant halberd. And I was also recently a new member in the game. And I can't remember who it was. I actually think it was one of my neighborhood friends who had like my password logged in and took it from me. I stopped talking to him and I cried. I bawled my fucking eyes out knowing I'd never Dude, get that Addy and you learned back. And you learned a valuable lesson that day. Mm-hmm. I learned a very valuable lesson. Oh, so real, man. I, same thing happened to me. Uh, some guy stole my frog helmet in RuneScape. I was fucking pissed. I never speak to him. Never spoke to him again. He was on my soccer team. Never spoke to him again. <laughs> wait, that's like the third. Wait, when you were down here, is that the same guy you mentioned, like or something? Oh yeah, yeah. But but we're on we're on we're on camera right now. So his, his name we we can't speak his name. But yeah, same same guy, dickhead. Like this, just to put it in perspective, when when he was down here, we were hanging out. He mentioned him like three separate times. That dude <laughs> had a profound impact on baby's life. Traumatic, man. <laughs> Traumatic. Oh, uh, yeah. It but you need that. Is, you, it, it, it makes gaming dynamic. But actually thinking about it now, though, I think there is a balancing act and we can't go full like allow anything on these platforms because then you look at Roblox and all the children getting groomed on there and stuff like that. Uh, that's true. And it's, that's, that's it's very yeah. clear that we, we, we need some kind of limit to how much freedom is allowed. But I definitely think they've overcorrected and, and yeah. we need to allow scams back. Totally. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I probably learned all of the bad words via gaming. And I, yeah. I remember I was like on a, on a vent call one time with like a bunch of, bunch of people I was in a guild with and wow. And I was like legit 12 or like 11. And this guy's like, yeah, man, I just woke up last night. Just got a blowjob. And I was like, hmm, what's a blowjob? <laughs> and then they immediately kicked me out of the server. And uh, I just remember <laughs> being, being like figuring out that day that, People suck on penis. And I was like, oh, whoa, like, that's weird. I only, like, I thought babies kind of, like, came from the sky. And, <laughs> I, you know, that was, but it's like a weird learning curve, you know? It's a learning experience where you, the internet teaches you so much. I, I don't know. I had I a similar, wow, well, I had something kind of similar, but it was for Halo. I still remember it. I didn't know that penis sucking was a thing. And I had a friend on the game whose name was, uh, or it wasn't a friend. It was just someone in like a lobby. And I remember we were playing on midship. His name was, I have hairy balls. And he got into an argument <laughs> with some other dude in the game. <laughs> and, and the guy was like, yeah, so you, having hairy balls sucks. You fucking, you, you definitely don't get any action from women. He's like, yeah, I do. I absolutely do. He's like, no, -uh, no girl would ever want to suck on hairy balls. And I remember sitting there thinking like, that's like a really good point. Like, oh my God, if, if someone's sucking on nuts, like they're not going to want all that hair. And it's one of those things where, like, you learn so much just from people <laughs> online shit talking. Do you think that interaction started your entire internet career, yeah. Charlie? Oh. Yeah, I was like, damn. Oh, my. Wait, yeah, I could, I could really talk thinking. about this. I could bring this to the masses. People <laughs> yeah, need to know. I could, I could educate people on hairy nuts. 
Until this day, I've been plucking every hair out of my balls. <laughs> <laughs> it's immensely painful, but by God, it needs to be done. It's worth it. I'll never forget that guy on midship making such a profound point. Profound. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, it's, fun it's funny what sticks with you. Like what the what lessons yeah. you mm -hmm. take from gaming that you still think about like twenty years on. I don't know. Gaming yeah, is so unique know. in that capacity that that it just creates those kinds of memories. You don't get that from any other like medium really. No, mm. absolutely. No. Yeah. I mean I figured out how to like sell items and convince people that it's a good deal and and like figure out that the ability you can you can do literally anything on the internet. <laughs> It's like a, you know, it's the, I feel like gaming is, gaming is, my mom never agreed, but I remember I was yeah. just like, just let me play video games. It's like, it's good for me. At least, at least I'm not outside like doing drugs or being a bad boy doing stupid shit. You know what I mean? So I always kind of held that up high and then, yeah. but now look at, now look at gaming. I feel like moms are just like encouraging kids to play video games because yeah. they actually can be yeah. incredibly Parenting. successful and, and yeah, it's such a different, su such a different scope now. This new everything totally different. Everything's culture, changed. Yeah. Well, not yeah. just games. Fucking anime. I remember growing up. Like, if you liked anime, that had to be a secret you took to the grave because people would make yep. fun of you for that shit. Now, yep. if you don't like yep. anime, you're the weirdo. Yep. No, nothing was more cringy and embarrassing than being an anime fan in middle and high school. Yeah. Nothing got you more part like ostracized in that like weirdo group of like, oh, they're on the internet and drawing fan art and doing this weird shit. No matter what level you watched, if you admitted to watching anything other than like Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball, Yu Gi Oh, yep. the most mainstream shit. If you admitted to liking any of it, people were like, "Oh, they're probably a weirdo who just like jacks off to hentai and has no friends and lives in the basement." Like it was a huge cultural difference than it is now. Absolutely mm. crazy. Yeah, like same with WoW too. I, there was like a group of seven people in my high school that spoke about playing World of Warcraft, and we were like, "Let's not tell anyone else." So. Really? That happened with you? Because yeah, mine, mine was the complete opposite. For me, it was you were weird if you didn't play WoW because it was just so really? huge and everywhere yeah, and everyone was into too. it. Yeah. Yeah. I got shit on because I didn't play it and I was like, I'm not interested in MMOs. And then everyone was like, why aren't you playing it? Just try it. There's a free trial. There's 30 days free. Just do it. And I'd say, uh -huh. no, I'm not interested. But that was Man, like, I, it happened all the time. My experience was definitely more akin to the babies. Like, if you played WoW during, uh, like, during that time period, you were seen as like a nerd instead of like, well, if yeah, you were but playing like Call you're, of Duty you're or whatever. On, that's like a totally different culture, though. Like, how big yeah, was yeah, gaming yeah. in Australia back yeah, then? Yeah, gaming like, obviously that was probably super. Dumb. Yeah, yeah. You got your first game console in like 2002, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was more to do with like our internet was so shit over here, so people didn't engage yeah. with like online mm. gaming and stuff. So mm. we were delayed in terms of acceptance. Also, with the anime thing, like, any, I, I want to say like. The people that were watching anime when I was growing up were the weird ones. Like they were genuinely like weird people, usually. No, so I, I think, no, you're absolutely just looking at it through the lens of what you remember as a kid. I bet like maybe. there were normal people that you just fucking bullied because of that, and you're like, no, no I didn't bully anyone. <laughs> I didn't bully anyone. No, it was only okay, other people bullied them, and then they got that perception. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fucking no. jerkson over here. It was like the weird kid in the back of the class, like who would come to school wearing like jumpers in summer and stuff like that. I don't know. It just there was like a weird vibe. Nothing fills me with more joy than finding that really, really specific nostalgia of that era where you stumble on, let's say, an old website or an old DeviantArt account and you see some like 16 year old girls drawings of their character with Inuyasha or some other oh, anime from Inuyasha the time and it's like so big. it's chibi anime art and it's the most generic like amateurish art style but it's just drawing after drawing after drawing of like really not funny oh. jokes and romance stuff and it, it's just like oh man mm. i haven't seen this shit in 20 years this used to be everywhere on the internet holy fuck you just reminded me like one of the biggest anime watches in my high school was like a girl in like the grade above uh, and she would she would just hang out at the library and pretend to be a vampire all day. Like she just like yeah. run around kissing, kissing at people and stuff Those like that. Girls so would, <laughs> there was always that one girl in every school where she would like role play all the time or say, yes. "Did you have a girl?" Did, I had a girl in my class, uh, and I know this is a common phenomenon where they would steal Japanese insults from anime. Like they call people baka. Oh, baka! Or they, yes. they like use that kind of vocabulary oh my God, back I then. I remember that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
It was the Dude, worst. Remember the thousand years of pain? Everyone was sticking yeah. their fingers up everyone's asses. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Holy classic times. Shit. I miss those days. One day our yeah, audience will be old too. enough to feel like we do. Yeah. One day. The thousand years of pain. I didn't I didn't enjoy trying to get into the library with the vampire guarding it. I could do I could have done without that, but all the other high school shit, yeah, I, I missed that shit so much. That was fun Did times. It didn't feel like fun times at the go time. to the library in high school though. Because I feel like not once. Yeah, what? I feel like I never went. In university, I was there like every fucking day because you have to actually try. Whereas like in high school, I would, if I was pressed to go get it. Yep. As soon, as soon as the family computer became somewhat capable, I never went there again. I did absolutely everything on the internet. Yep. Absolutely same. Yeah. That's yeah, right. Totally. Yeah. So you guys just never read books or anything like that? I uh, just get them online. Yeah, I, I read books I, all the time growing up, and then my family got a new computer, and I went, "What the fuck do I need a book for? Everything's here. There's no point." <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is wild. pretty crazy the accessibility of information online. Like, if you just use Google Scholar, like you can actually get incredibly valuable information for free. Yeah, it's like insane. Whereas, like paying for that back in the day, you would actually have to work at at a facility that would be paying hundreds of thousands of dollars for academia. Yeah. And it's, it's just so available. You can be so smart and yeah. And I'll, I'll give you thing. another level. I'll give you another level of that, that the internet has brought us. So a lot of places that publish those papers are profit. They're like science journals or collaboratives or whatever, and they want to make money. They want to reprint the story, put it out there, etc. If you using the internet, look up the paper and it's like, oh, buy the full version or what the fuck ever. You can track down the author's information from the paper, get their email or their professional contact. And if you message them and say, hey, I'm interested in reading this paper, 99% of the time they will send it to you for free because the yeah. money part of it, they have nothing to do with. They just wanted their paper published for their corporation or their research or whatever. And they'll just email you a copy and yeah, you just get how, free yeah. research that normally back in the day you'd have no access to whatsoever. I do find it. I do find it pretty interesting. I mean, my sister's doing a, a, her thesis right now on family psychology of like sexual abuse. She's a psychologist, uh, and it's just like getting that, getting her name on a piece of paper is like the most important thing when you're doing your PhD. She's yeah. done like three three articles mm -hmm. already at this point, and it's just like she's like it doesn't even matter if you get fucked over and you have to do like hours and hours and hours of work. Just to get that name out there, it's like such good credit in the world. Credibility, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the credibility. You can, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I've seen in science circles, getting your name on a paper is like the floodgates are open. Like then you can easily oh, yeah. get on like 10 more and you get this inv invite and this opportunity. It's like, it's the most important like milestone because after that, everything just flows. You know? So is the name is the name on the paper more important than the actual research like itself like the village probably the in a lot of cases yeah, yeah. probably yeah <laughs> that's Honestly. crazy there's probably something yeah. wrong there then <laughs> it's, well <laughs> there's definitely something the there's definitely something wrong with the fundamental like scheme of yeah. what academia is but that's oh, just yeah. the nature of it like she's been yeah. she's been doing like an internship that has been severely underpaid well it's like a paid internship but it's like it's like 10k a year and she works like 30 hours a week on the downtown east side and so in vancouver there's like a really bad unhoused problem and she's doing straight therapy for you know people who have incredible incredibly <coughs> bad mental mental addiction and problems and like that so she's like at risk for 30 hours a week and she's getting paid like 10k but she has to do it because that's how that's her research and that's like right. someone higher right. above Ridiculous. her is telling her to do it so she can get her name on a piece of paper and it's just like she hasn't even finished school yet and i'm fucking I, i'm you know it's just insane the, the education system is super interesting yeah it's broken yeah definitely very cool were you, were you gonna say something kyle i was gonna say i think i heard that like more papers get published than are ever read or cited Nowadays, mm -hmm. and also people have noticed that if you go to Google Scholar and type in the sentence, like the robotic 
certainly, here are 12 things that are blah, blah, blah. And you type that in, you get people that just lazily copy paste the chat GPT outputs into their papers. Oh. <laughs> Where you have extracts, like actual paragraphs where it says, as an AI language model, I cannot assist you with this. <laughs> and the person just, no, just looks at no. it, I guess, copy pasting it. <laughs> Holy fuck, that's scummy. We're going to see a lot more of that, I think. That reminds me of the guy, it's a similar idea with terms of service, terms of conditions agreements. That reminds me of the software developer who, in his terms of service, he literally just wrote a sentence that said, if you read this and email me, I'll give you $1,000. <laughs> and I think it took like two years for someone to finally claim it <laughs> because no one reads that shit. Mm -hmm. That's so that's so smart though. I, mean, yeah. not, I guess not smart, but just kind that's of fun. It's so smart. He just lost a thousand dollars. It's not like he. <laughs> yeah, he it's not smart, but it's just kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I just remember going through articles when I was writing my lab reports and stuff like that, and I would if if there was something that I was like writing the report on, I would just Control F, type it in, copy that. And then just change a couple words, and I was like, there it is, plagiarism done 101. That's university. <laughs> it's just learning how to not get caught, that kind of thing. So, uh, but yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Um, did we have any other pressing questions? or? Yeah, did you guys yeah, want to ask it? Baby anything about his uh, work or anything like that? I feel like we talked about sex and video games. <laughs> kind of sex and dick come that is work. pissing shit, baby. <laughs> that is work. Oh, I, I have a question. I have a question. I have a really important question. You, you like, rap, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was my question. We're done. All right, cool. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Honestly, Thanks, it's nice not talking about, talking about music, so. It, yeah. I, like, I enjoy not talking about music. Trying to put yourself in like, uh, p put myself in your position. I imagine like you just get those questions, those kinds of questions a lot, and then it just c kind of becomes boring to mm -hmm. talk about in that sense. Yeah. Uh, on a show like yeah. this. Uh, but yeah, I was like more so thinking from the audience perspective, maybe they would want to know, but fuck them, whatever. Fucking idiots. This is for us. This is for us. Yeah, music. Music's <laughs> fun. It's frustrating, and I like to perform. There it is. But the they want to. Okay, yeah. But they want to know how do they how do they achieve what you've achieved? That's probably the most pressing question. Um, I mean, look, it's kind of just like throughout anything. If you're doing anything creative, if you're doing anything that you have to take the initiative on. It's just like everyone could say that they're going to do something, but like if you don't just do it, then you're just wasting time kind of thing mm -hmm. uh so it doesn't matter what you're doing whether it be creative or just you know in an academic perspective it's like it's like doing your homework before it's actually due is ideal you know that's that's how that's how you're supposed to do anything if you but most importantly you just you gotta love it i love waking up in the morning and just working um admin things or or making music or anything like that uh yeah, you think you'd still do it? You think you'd still do it if, even if you weren't successful at it? Because that's probably like the most deterministic aspect of it, right? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a level to it. I don't think I would be doing it as as much because I would probably be Need know, a job. either back in school uh, or have just like a normal job. Um, mm. But I would still be doing it in, in my spare time for sure. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think when I found the transition point, I was just like, oh, I'm actually making enough money to support myself. Like, I'm just going to fucking quit my job and go crazy. I'm going to give it a shot because if I don't, I'm going to hate myself for the rest of my life. And then at mm -hmm. that point, I was like, oh, this is incredible. Like, I actually have the ability to do this. And then I just kept on doing it. And, you know, I doubled <laughs> down when when gravy blew up. I was like, OK, I'm going to stop partying because I was university just going out a bunch. And I was like, I have to take this way more serious. And then. I was like, I don't know if I'm ever going to have another opportunity if I don't at least try. So I ended up starting to put wake up, waking up at like four in the morning and slamming like a whole pot of coffee and just working all day. So, yeah. So that's it. You got you, you got to have the ambition and the follow through, basically. The drive, yeah. the passion. It, it's kind of like this weird, like the willingness to shit yourself on stage in front of thousands and still yeah, wake yeah, up in the morning like, to do it again. You have that's to what you have to do. That's step one. You have to be delusional. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. come soft. Yeah, and yeah. come soft. If you, <laughs> don't, if you don't come soft, you're cringe. That's it. <laughs> <laughs>
You have to be uh, yeah, a level 80 sense. blood knight in World of Warcraft who can macro with the best of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you're not 20, 2700 running TSG, you're fucking a bitch. Oh, so you have the actual <laughs> terms. I just made up what I said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I love WoW so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's wrap there, baby. Did you did you want to say anything else or I don't know? Shout oh, shout out your stuff. Please plug you yourself. Really by the way, shout out yeah. your stuff. Whatever you want, go nuts. Oh yeah, do you nah, have anything new coming up? I'm gonna. Uh, oh, I do have a big one. Yo, Charlie, should we should we leak it? That's up to I you, know. brother. That's on you. Man. I mean, there's only gonna be like 200 people ish that know about like what I might say right now, but. Um, do it long story short uh, I came down to Tampa and Charlie and I are in it Charlie and I are pretty much the next music video that we have coming out I have this song where I sampled La Freak uh, by Chic so it's like the ah uh, freak out and uh, yeah Charlie and I were just dancing a bunch and he knows how to shuffle really well and uh is yeah. that why you get, did, did you get yeah. lessons for that, Charlie, for shuffling? I saw a video. No, recently. not for was that. that no, no. Like, he, <laughs> he, he, hit, he hit me with this idea like well after I'd been on this quest to be like the best dancer at clubs. <laughs> so I busted out every single move I've been teaching myself, even the worst ones like uh, the crab, which is a, a homebrew where I like, act like a crab on the dance floor type shit. So <laughs> it all worked out really well. Yeah. Nice. But uh, yeah, we just sent the music video off to VFXing. Uh, and it, it looks great. It looks really funny. It's like super, it's super random and dope. And, uh, yeah, it's one of my better songs I think I've made. I think, I think it's going to go crazy. I don't know. It was fire. I, I yeah. really enjoyed being a part of it. So thanks for having me on board. Yeah, it was good. It was really good, man. Thanks for, thanks for jumping on board. But, uh, I have to go take a poop on the talk of poop again. Um, yeah, no. it all comes full circle. It's always full circle. Before before we wrap, uh, someone yeah, chat's going wild. They're asking something about forklift certification. They they're asking ask if he's forklift certified for the boys. No clue what that means. So does that mean uh, anything? I am fork forklift certified, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I have my go. class. I have my class fork. Um, is that a reference or something? List. No, I'm just I'm just I'm, I'm I would assume like there's a classification of it, but I don't know. I'm not forklift <laughs> certified. Okay. Well, so I don't, I am. that's from dis- that's from <laughs> Patreon. That's from the patrons. They wanted me to ask. I don't know what the fuck it means. Anyway, fake forklifter. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, baby. Really appreciate it. Uh, go check it. Go check his music out. It's great. My girlfriend loves it. So do I. That's an <laughs> endorsement from us. Um, other than that, Patreon.com. Uh, the official podcast patreon.com slash the official podcast for bonus content stuff like that go check it out thank you very much for joining us man go enjoy your uh, shit your post podcast shit thank you boys I'll see I'll, I'll see you guys soon eventually in one of these days uh, yeah mm-hmm. Charlie are we are, you still want me to pop down in early June yes perform? sir that's that's right, still perfect. on the schedule brother alright wonderful oh my god I just saw this vi- this this gif of me smiling, I hate this shit in the in the chat. Oh yeah, I see I that. Hate this. Oh yikes. <laughs> uh, okay, and that mo- moment I am going to head out because that scared me. Um, <laughs> damn, they're so, yeah. sending some crazy shit in here. Get out of here, get out of here, run, run away yeah. before they get Leave worse. Now. All right. All right, bye guys. <laughs> see you guys. Bye. I'll, I'll Thank talk you. to y'all soon. Thanks, Thanks for Jackson, listening. Give us Goodbye. the outro. I already did. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.